Today in the news, Sony starts to look like AMD and Xbox is making moves. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Sony. The company has published a patent last week about a scalable solution for home consoles and cloud gaming. Not only are these interesting, but it looks like Sony is considering taking advantage of what AMD has been doing for a while, using chiplets. In the patents, they outline many, many ways in which the APUs could be configured to increase performance. Here's one example where they would have two complete APUs on a single die or on respective chiplets. These would communicate via a fabric. I'm guessing it's the infinity fabric here since you know amd makes the console this is similar to the first generation of epic processors where memory control was split between each dies this specific solution would have a major impact on memory latency the second method would be very similar to our current zen 2 processors with the processing being done on separate dies and the io being on another and the last method is reminiscent of amd's old ways called dual graphics except on a single pack Package. It would use a complete APU with I.O. and memory controller and a secondary die with a simple APU, aka just the CPU and GPU on the die. Keep in mind that in all of those cases, Sony says that there could be two or more of each component. Then they go on to explain that these methods could use alternate frame rendering or split frame rendering like in the good old days of Crossfire and SLI. Now what's interesting is the fact that all of those chiplet variants will continue contain a CPU and a GPU. Now patents will usually sprinkle in blanket terms like and and or to make sure that they cover as much as possible, but in that case there's always a CPU in the same die as the GPU. This makes it seem like it's probably geared towards cloud gaming only, as the dies could be virtualized as single consoles very easily. But this patent describes this as being for home consoles and for cloud gaming. This could pave the way to a PS5 Pro later in the PlayStation 4. 5's life cycle. What do you guys think? Link to the patent down below if you want to read it. It's pretty long but very interesting. Also in Sony news, we had a surprising announcement yesterday. The company announced that the good old DualShock 4 controllers will not be completely forward compatible with the PS5. While this isn't the most surprising thing ever, I mean the Xbox 360 controller was just not forwards compatible with the Xbox One, it is an odd limitation. As is, the DualShock of yesteryears will only work with the PS5 on supported PS4 games. The reason for this is because Sony believes that PS5 games should take advantage of the new capabilities and features they're bringing to the platform, including the features of the DualSense wireless controller, the main feature being the adaptive triggers. Now, in my opinion, I think Sony's kind of making a mistake. Every time you entrust something to third-party developers, especially when they have to make games for three different consoles, usually they won't spend as much time on your special features. Oddly enough, you will still be able to play next-gen games with your PS4 using Xbox services like xCloud and Game Pass. Just not on an actual Xbox, of course. Speaking of Xbox services, Microsoft is finally going to expand the availability of xCloud. It's been in closed beta for a long time with a limited amount of games, and that will end on September 15th. Not only will it enter its paid complete state, but the service will merge with Game Pass Ultimate. The full version of the service will only be available on Android for now, but Microsoft did previously say that the Windows 10 and iOS version will come in 2020. It's a little expensive at 15 bucks US or 17 Canadian a month, but when compared to other services, it just can't be beat. While PS Now is great and has over 800 games, there are no new ones. As for other platforms like Stadia and GeForce Now, they require you to buy the games. xCloud being bundled into Game Pass Ultimate allows you to play brand new games and upcoming ones. This is where Xbox, the ecosystem, will make money. Hell, you might not even want to buy a console anymore. It's a $17 here and there when you want to play and you can play some of the newest games. Let's just hope that uh, the latency will be better than Stadia. And that is pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. That Sony thing is pretty interesting. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.